Hey everybody, this is Raul with Bass Musician Magazine and today we have the extraordinary honor and pleasure of being the actual same location with bassist Ricky Phillips with Sticks. Raul, <laughs> all right. So there are some amazingly great things coming down the pike, but you're going to have to stay tuned to follow up on those. But the reason we're here is today the United We Rock Tour is kicking off. Day one happening out of here, Ridgefield, Washington on a lovely sunny day. And I'm stoked and excited to be here with Ricky so he can tell us a little bit about this extraordinary uh, tour yeah. with Ario Speedwagon, Styx, and- Don Felder. Don Felder. The one and only. Yeah, you know, uh, this is fun because we've, over the past few years, we've done, uh, we've worked with Don uh, we even did a thing in Las Vegas earlier this year where we were the Eagles for Don. Oh, nice. Uh, that was the surprise to the fans who bought tickets is they, they saw Don Fel Felder and, and Styx. They didn't know until they got there that we were actually on stage with Don. And then he came back out uh, during our show. But uh, So he's great, and, and I love Don. He's playing the first time we ever worked with Don, uh, all the guitar players from all the bands as soon as he hit, he hit the stage, man, they were all in the way of every, uh, you know, tack and roadie that was there, there trying to do his show because everybody wanted to see him play. It's such iconic guitar parts that he plays and does so well. Just beautiful player. And, um, and then REO, I mean, the REO and Sticks go back way before I was even around Sticks. And, uh, and Dave Amato, the uh, guitarist with uh, REO, he and I have worked together for over 30 years probably and various various things in Los Angeles in the studio great player great guy and um, yeah and I've, I've I've known all the guys I guess in REO for for a number of years so it's fun to be out with people you know and enjoy the kind of we get out on days off and we're gonna be when I saw Kevin last night he came in he's playing golf again which I, I never stopped and so uh, we're already talking about getting getting the bands together with Don. Don and I play golf on the road as well. I've turned him onto a couple of golf courses, yeah. and he's he's played all the good ones. So uh, at least get a little shotgun going or something, right? Exactly. Well, we'll do something. <laughs> we'll make it fair. We'll make it fair. But it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It gets us out of you know backstage and in hotel rooms and 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 on green grass. And for those people who don't understand golf. It's 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 an addiction, <laughs> is what it is. And it's like music, but it, but just a little it different. Is, yeah. But you, it's it's you against the world. I mean, it, it is the most difficult, crazy sport, and I don't know why we do it, but we love it. We go back and we get brutalized, and and every time we go, but it's it's a lot of fun. I think the parallel is with with music is every time I know that I play, I wish I was better at it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's something that's it's an uh, ongoing growth process. What's that ten thousand hour thing? Uh, you know, I I probably put in a hundred thousand hours on golf, but it doesn't seem to help. Gotcha. Well, and the tour is kicking off here in Washington State. What's the trajectory, more or less? Because I know people are going to want to see this iconic rock and roll tour well we're doing the west coast first okay cutting across central america from denver to salt lake and we jump over to chicago um i'm not sure exactly where we end up on the first leg but then we take a little breather come back out and that wraps around i believe starts in florida goes up the east coast comes back down ends up in texas and uh that i believe there's a short third leg but uh it's it's kind of routine for us. We got it down. We we have all our favorite foods on the bus, and mm -hmm. and uh, and guys that want to watch sports are usually in the back. Guys that want to watch a movie or whatever up front. Somebody's brought something, uh, a series that we're gonna you know uh, binge watch. We'll do that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a lot of work. It's a lot. It's crazy hours. Not for everybody. Some people would hate it. Lack of sleep, I suppose, more than anything. But we've got it down, and it's we get on. Uh, sense of humor goes a long way in sticks, and I think with most bands that are still doing it, um, the ones that actually are in the same bus and not all traveling in separate buses, uh, we've got it down as far as how to respect somebody when you know they need some little privacy to get maybe a little touchy over a few things, and mm -hmm. and uh, it's a brotherhood. It's a brotherhood that. We have a lot of laughs together, and then we also know how to stay out of each other's face when we need to. Very cool. And equally exciting, Sticks just released The Mission. Mm -hmm. And that's another hot thing, you know, you, you gotta hear. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Um, Tommy Shaw's concept, he came up to me probably four years ago and said, I've got a concept for a record. Kind of told me what it was about. Uh, probably in our lifetime, there will be a mission to Mars manned with, with uh, humans. And um, that's kind of what his concept was. And, you know, people could jump all over us and tear us apart. Well, wait a minute, you know, I thought you weren't going to do any more concept albums. And I've ha actually had that come up in interviews. But Tommy just had a great idea that, that he, he, against all odds, pursued. And uh, it's, it's, it's turned out to be a home run so far. We've gotten a lot of really nice, nice response to it from all kinds of different camps. Everybody was really able to... Now we've had the luxury of, of playing. Uh, I'm almost finished with my 14th year in the band and starting my 15th. And over that time, we've been on the road over 200 days a year. And um, so we've done a lot of playing together. This unit is pretty solid. I know we don't think about it, but it's it's a thing we ebb and flow with each other. So going in the studio and make doing a full on project like this is probably the most effortless and seamless recording I've ever done with a band. Um, we didn't have to labor over anything. Everybody does their homework in this band, so they come prepared with multiple ideas. And so it isn't uh, as though we just went, oh, let's just do this. But everybody put in time away from sure. the studio, knowing knowing that uh, there, there are times when something may, may be not coming out the way you thought up here mm -hmm. in application so uh, everybody has the alternate ideas and if somebody suggests something we try it and uh, there are a couple of times where there was something like that that happened but never a hitch and nothing that ever took us very long in the wrong direction and uh, it, I, I try to recall us in the studio because it happens so quickly yeah it's a blur is it yeah it's just a blur <laughs> and, and and then I hear what what I specifically played and I'm so happy with it will um, and and uh, I guess, I guess Tommy and Will basically kind of, Tommy would say things like, I want to hear the Ricky Phillips that I hear in the dressing room warming up. I want to hear all that ripping you do. I don't want yeah. you to hold back. And I'm, that's exactly the opposite of anything any producer has ever, ever said to me. So it was a lot of fun to go in there and find those spots where you can do that, still hold it down and, and be musical and, and then find your moments where you can kind of stretch out a bit. And the... Uh, Thank you. I guess the palette for the whole record is so, it changes, the mood changes, it's a storyline, so there's, there's tense times where there's a lot of, uh, there's some pieces in odd, in odd meters that, that gets away from four, sort of a 4-4 four, four format. I love playing a 5 and there's a song called Red Storm that kind of changes time signatures a few times and, um, and I, I, I just love playing that song, I was able to kind of riff off, do a few things. There's a song called Locomotive that se people seem to be, I'm getting uh, some nice press on uh, what I played on Locomotive. And it is, I suppose, I gotta say, as a kid, I had some of the best teachers. And to get that as a kid, to become part of your DNA, when you become you, it's a lot of people in there. It, it feels like you, but you've heard and learned so much and from Paul McCartney and his incredible melodic bass lines to John Entwistle and his aggressive but impeccable timing and the way he was able to just play the most difficult passages effortlessly and um, uh, John Paul Jones, Jack Bruce, certainly Chris Squire and a lot of those influences in for some reason on the mission seem to have sneaked out and I can kind of see some of my own influences hearing it played back to me. Very cool. Um, I kind of know, oh wow, I, I know where that came from. And it isn't like you're copying somebody, but the idea. <laughs> like, let's take Jocko. I don't play anything like Jocko, but one of the things I learned from Jocko is don't be safe. Don't always stay safe. You know, take mm -hmm. some chances. So I love doing that. Um, and there's just so many great players that I was able to grow up with. And, and what a time to want to be a bass player. Oh, totally. <laughs> well, you st we stand on the shoulders of giants, but interesting, 
the mission has your DNA in it. Yeah. This is this is the beauty of it. And so yeah. out there, somebody will hear it right. and start trying to rip, going, "I want to, I want to get that Ricky Phillips <laughs> lick." And so who knows? Down the road, we'll be listening, going, "Yeah, I, I picked up this 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 riff from from Ricky, man." So this- well, I hope so, man. I, I mean, I, ho- I I hope it in the in the sense that um, I'm doing something that's that's um, inspiring inspiring to yeah. someone because that's really inspiration mm-hmm. uh, when I when I first saw the Beatles it was I, I wanted to do that because all the girls were screaming but then <laughs> as you get deeper into it you get a little older oh. you know you're away from the surface yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you all of a sudden realize wow you know when I I used to play guitar in my first bands when I was 12 or 13 and my mm-hmm. my bass player left his bass at the house and and uh, I started playing it and I was trying to play John Entwistle lines and 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 some McCartney lines like like Penny Lane, you know, da 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 boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you realize, wow, there's a lot more to this than just banging eighth notes. And uh, I got, I became obsessed with it. Um, I still played guitar, and I started on piano. I still, I have three acoustic pianos in my home, and a, I don't know, probably five or six other keyboards. I have a Hammond B3 in my studio downstairs. And, um, the plane is just taking off. If anyone's <laughs> hearing, if, if yeah. you see something come crashing, into this, there's a Sticks uh, REO Speedwagon banner that is a little precarious, but we'll right. we'll carry on. Yeah, and, and yeah. hopefully without trauma. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it everything that you do, if if it's if it's inspired and you find a place of, of inspiration that uh, allows you to sleep on couches like I did when I hit LA and mm-hmm. and and not care. Play, have five guys, you know, in a motel room. Some sleeping on the floor. It's my turn to get to bed. I get to bed tonight. I mean, I did that for years before hitting L.A. and trying uh, to see if I had what it takes. Totally. And you, but I didn't care. I loved it. I wouldn't have changed a thing. I uh, maybe not eat for a day or two. And hey, I'll eat when when I get a, a <laughs> like, couple like bucks. Now, and, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat later. Yeah. Well, and 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 just so I don't forget. You're a Fender player. You, you bring your Fender on tour? Or? Actually, tonight you'll see me playing um, Italia's, which ah. um, it's kind of interesting. I had a Fender that the custom shop built for me. I actually designed the bass, mm-hmm. and uh, John Page, who was at Fender at the time, greenlighted the project and let me, let me build this thing. And uh, it was a bass that I played. I played it on the Coverdale Page record. I played a lot, on a lot of stuff. It's a, it's a really cool bass, five string, and, and has some favorite things. And um, I needed a backup, and I had this Italia bass, and to be honest with you, it wasn't the greatest bass, but uh, it had the same kind of bones. It had a hollow, one section that was hollow mm-hmm. and some things, so I had it braced on the inside. I, I gutted it. I put some better hardware on it, and I put in some EMG pickups that I like to use. And lo and behold, the thing sounded pretty damn good. Nice. And uh, so it became sort of, and I'll... I think I'm playing that on stage tonight. Nice. I may be. I'll have to look at the set list. But anyway, um, so they approached me about doing a signature bass, which I really haven't done yet. But in the meantime, I designed the two basses I'm playing tonight uh, that are really good with um, with sticks because I started playing five strings when I was in Bad English. When when Jonathan came and and the music we were writing gets big like that and the, and the keyboard player is able to go down to to low C's and B's and D's. I wanted to be able to do that too, so I switched to five strings. Don't use it that often, but it's always there when you need it. Sure. And um, so these basses have a few things. I've got two uh, bass clefts on the 12th fret instead of dots. I've got some glow-in-the-dark dots on the neck so that when the stage goes dark, I can still see if I'm starting on the 14th fret playing, or something. Yeah. I can uh, I can get up there and 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 visually see see the glow in the dark dots, um, but the MG pickups have been something I, a mainstay for me, um, and uh, checkerboard binding up like my '73 uh, Rickenbacker bass I put that on these bases and a few little atonements that I that nice. I personally like. All that said, if you go back to the mission, I didn't use any of this stuff on the mission. I used all of my vintage instruments. Mm-hmm. I played two 68 tellies. Um, I played a 62P, um, a 63P, and a 60P. I played a 65 matching headstock jazz bass. White is gorgeous. And uh, what else? Um, there might be another Fender in there, but 
playing those passive bases is just a blast. And, and when you're able to have the luxury of being in a good studio, like we recorded it. Uh, in Nashville, right? In Nashville, yeah, at Blackbird. So um, I had an SVT I, that, I, that I love. It's my favorite recording head. Uh, and then I used a bottom that they had there. They have great stuff, at, an incredible collection of vintage stuff there at nice. Blackbird. So, uh, and they have all the mics the Beatles use. They have everything up to the present. Anything you can think of, they've got it. And Very we, cool. the record was done with no digital um, processing. It's all, we used all the old gear and they had it wow. all. They had it all there. That was one of the reasons Tommy wanted to record there. And so it's really fun getting passive tones. The tones on this record um, sound a little different than, than what I've recorded in the past 15 years certainly uh, in the fact that it's two inch tape that we used for the drums and mm -hmm. some of the bass um, we were ganging two tape machines together and the relays catching up every time we had to take another take was eating up time in the studio so um, I think maybe the last four four tracks or so that I did were not on tape they, uh, but you can't tell. I mean, it was these days with high res finally getting to where it is. High res sounds really, really good, as you know. Okay. And uh, it's a good sounding record. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And are we going to get a sample of some of the mission tonight? On, you get on, a little on, taste. On, yeah, little taste. we'll give you a little oh, taste. Oh man, I'm so looking forward to that. I think we're I think we're uh, wise enough in our years that we don't force feed the audience on stuff that they haven't really become familiar with mm -hmm. yet. We give them the hits that they've spent their hard earned cash to here totally and uh so we respect that but there'll there'll be a couple things that we'll we'll throw out there without it being too painful we'll and pick the interest yeah 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 and uh I, the thing about the mission i will say is it's i've i've said this before on, on uh on camera is that if you can listen to that thing in headphones it is the greatest experience. You can hear the panning and the effects all done, I, like as I said, with analog gear. But the way it's done is really cool. Um, and the sounds, the tones, there's some dialogue that goes on between the astronauts that you hear uh, and ground control that kind of happens while the music is evolving into the next piece. The way it's written is it's, it just doesn't stop. It keeps on going. And uh, it, it's a fun, fun ride. Um, uh, I think I think people are people are already digging it, but I think uh, I wasn't a huge concept album guy myself, but I, I really enjoy this one. It's fun. Very cool. And I, I know we, we actually got a hold of Ricky right off. He's almost like hot off the tour bus. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're really excited with that. So that if people want to know more about what's going on with you, what's the best website to go to? Well, you know, my website is uh, is embarrassingly out of date, <laughs> and um, I I really um, the things I will on social media, I guess Facebook and things like that. Okay. As things come up, I try to uh, give a little shout out to whatever the project is, and I do have some news coming up here very soon on some things I've been working on for a few years. A, passion a very passionate project that I, I took over and uh, some I'm hoping you'll let us know first right and, and I, I would love to let you know first there's there's an, you heard on, it here I've on, got on tape okay all right there yeah. was a tape that, that proved it unlike okay. so many other places right don't get me started <laughs> uh, yeah so anyway um, also United we rock tour yes um, if you don't know the website by memory, I don't either, but I will find it and I'll put it underneath here. Well, you can go to sticksworld.com. Sticks okay. um, that's a good place to go to, to, just to find everything about, about Sticks. Um, there are members that are, uh, there's a members lounge sort of thing, but you don't have to get that elaborate. You can go there to find information. Very cool. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, this is going to be a fun summer. Oh, it's a lot so of exciting. Well, yeah. Ricky, we appreciate you taking time out of a busy schedule, especially on day one of the United We Rock tour. The mission is out already. You can get it and hear it. If you come to one of, one of the shows, you'll be treated to a sampling, which is going to definitely make you want to hear it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all great. You really have to experience this. Thanks again. You've seen it here. Ricky Phillips from Styx. Bass Musician Magazine coming to you live from Ridgefield, Washington. Thank you. Thanks, Raul. Thank you.